Thank you for taking a few minutes to view this important video. As a manufacturer member of the Steel Framing Industry Association, you can take pride in knowing that the studs and track you are producing are independently verified to meet the requirements of building codes and standards. Your company's commitment to quality is recognized through the SFIA certification, an honor that not all have attained. SFIA code compliance certification requires regular inspections of your facility and random product samplings by our third-party inspection agency. This video will give you an overview of what to expect during a typical inspection and sampling visit. By becoming familiar with this inspection process, it is our objective to help ensure that these inspections go as quickly as possible with a minimum disruption of your day. Other SFIA videos are available and planned to be produced in order to familiarize you with additional member benefits and aspects of the program, such as material traceability. Please refer to those videos as necessary or contact the SFIA with your questions or concerns. SFIA code compliance certification inspections are conducted twice a year. The inspection with sampling is generally a full day event and may take from six to eight hours, particularly if the member company is not familiar with the inspection process and is not prepared. You will be contacted concerning the scheduling of the initial inspection. However, all other inspections are unannounced. The SFIA determines the program requirements. These requirements are then verified by a third party, the program administrator, through inspections and samplings. The administrator begins by reviewing your product and your documented manufacturing practices. Then an inspection is scheduled in order to verify your documented processes and procedures. During the application process, you are asked to provide the administrator with your normal business hours, including any holiday and plant closings. This is to avoid an auditor showing up to a closed facility. Additional changes or emergency closings that you may incur should be promptly communicated to the program administrator in order to avoid additional charges. You are also asked to provide the administrator with a designated contact at your facility who will be responsible for working with the auditor during the in-facility audits. You will also need to identify and provide at least one secondary contact in the event that the primary audit contact is not available when the auditor arrives. Your primary and secondary audit contacts should be familiar with all your production and quality processes at the plant. They are also expected to provide full access to any areas necessary in order to complete the inspection. If neither of your designated audit contacts are available on the day of the inspection, the auditor will then work with your other available personnel in order to complete the audit. Here's what occurs with an auditor visit. When the auditor arrives, the facility contact is notified and the inspection process begins. The program requirements state that the auditor must be allowed to enter the manufacturing facility and conduct an audit within 15 minutes of their arrival. An opening meeting is conducted with any necessary introductions and explanations. The auditor sets up and begins the audit. Prior to the initial inspection, you submitted a quality control manual to the administrator. This manual was reviewed and approved for use based on the program requirements at the time you applied. One of the first tasks the auditor will perform is a review and verification of the quality manual currently in use at your facility. The auditor will verify that the quality manual in use matches the manual that you submitted to the administrator and includes accurate facility and plant contact information. The manual will also be checked for proper signatures, logging of revisions, and manual updates. A check that yearly management reviews are being performed will also be documented. Following the review of your quality manual, the auditor will request and conduct a walkthrough of your facility. During this walkthrough, key program requirements are performed. The verification of documented processes and quality checks, 
the marking and handling of non-conforming materials, verification of in-plant production documents, testing and measuring equipment are checked, including calibrations and verifications. Samples will be selected and dimensional measurements performed on each sample. Depending on the type of products produced at the facility, the samples may include structural, non-structural, and equivalent products. Product markings and labels are also examined, including markings applied to individual members, as well as skid and pallet markings. Each facility inspection includes an evaluation of the licensee's material traceability process. This involves the traceability of each of the samples selected. Traceability is required from the individual member markings back to the mill certs or the accredited lab test results of the master coil from which the member was produced. This traceability documentation will be packed and returned to the lab along with the samples. The traceability documentation serves a dual purpose. By the auditor, to verify the individual member markings with respect to the material and coating type, and by the labs, to verify the test results to the material. Once verified, each sample piece is carefully labeled and packaged for shipment to the lab for testing. The licensee is permitted to package the selected samples for shipment to the accredited laboratory. However, the auditor shall witness the packaging and the auditor shall ship the samples. The samples shall be shipped to the IAS accredited independent laboratory designated by the administrator within 24 hours of the inspection in order to avoid delays in testing and producing the inspection report. At the conclusion of the inspection, the auditor will conduct a closing meeting with plant personnel. The auditor shall discuss any findings, suggestions, recommendations, or reminders with the audit contact or company representative at the time of the on-site audit. The auditor will leave behind written signed notes about the audit. Be aware that these notes are only preliminary findings until testing is completed and the final report is issued. What happens to the samples when they arrive at the lab? Let's take a look. When the package is received, the materials are logged into the system, labels, material, and coding are verified, and the samples are prepared for testing. Small test pieces called dog bones and coupons are punched from each sample submitted. These punched pieces are used to perform several tests. Base metal thickness is measured and compared to the member markings and the program requirements. Mechanical properties are tested and verified against the material requirements of the SFIA program. Coatings are verified that they meet the product requirements for the member from which they were removed. This includes both standard and equivalent coatings. Three 12-inch pieces of each non-structural sample undergo salt fog testing as applicable. Following a review of the inspection notes and test results, the administrator issues an audit report which contains all official comments and decisions with respect to compliance or non-compliance with the program. This report also includes the dimensional checks performed by the auditor during the inspection, as well as the lab results from the samples tested. The report will outline any matters requiring clarification, corrective action, or any other required action on the part of the licensee, including deadlines for any responses. The auditor and administrator reports detailing the manufacturer's facility audit results are considered confidential and are issued to the licensee's designated representative through the administrator's office. When discrepancies are found, they are noted and an action plan for correction is needed. Depending on the nature of the variance, a notice of deficiencies or a notice of noncompliance may be issued. These notifications will spell out a timeline in which the administrator and licensee will work together for a resolution according to the program guidelines. If any of the selected samples fails a lab test, a resampling and further action is normally required. 
This action plan will also have a timeline for resolution of the failure and the resampling must be performed before regular program inspections are resumed. This concludes our look at the inspection process for the SFIA Code Compliance Certification Program. Builders in every geographic area can rest assured that with the SFIA mark, they are getting a consistent product which has been evaluated and tested from a manufacturer with established verified processes in place. For more information on the SFIA Code Compliance Certification Program, any of the other SFIA programs, or benefits of membership, feel free to contact the SFIA.